This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 350 of the Stable Scoop Radio Show. Good kitties. Please support our sponsors as they make this show possible. Our sponsors this week are Buy Me to Dewormers and EquiSketch. Cats and food abound today with Cat Hill joining us about her fantastic new book, World Class Grooming. And Cat from Eat Your Tart Out has recipes for the busy horsewoman. And Glenn and I get to eat some really good chocolate for Tech and Have It today. What a tough job we have. Welcome to the stable school with weekly shows delivered right to you. With Helena and Glenn the Geek, live from the stable, it's every week. They'll bring you the news through hail or hot water while using their tails as their own fly swatters. So sit on down and laugh till your poop cause it's time again for stable school. Stable Scoop Stable Scoop Stable Scoop This is Glenda Geek And this is Helena B And you're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show On the Horse Radio Network Well howdy everybody, hi Helena Hi Glenn, we got a delicious episode today Yeah, with this, it's so funny How many people do you know named Cat? And we have two of them on the show today mm-hmm. It's <laughs> kind of a cool name <laughs> Yeah, and one of them spelled with a C and one of them spelled with a K Plus, we have a bonus I just found out about Emma Ford, who is the groom to Philip Dutton Will be joining us from Jersey Fresh in Jersey They're there competing And she was co-author of the book we're going to be talking about today And she can make it We weren't sure she could And apparently I heard that she might be available in between dressage tests tests mm. so i was thinking maybe also oh, see now we can call it like fresh kitties <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. And, uh, and of course the whole chocolate thing which we'll get to later in the show but i say what do you say we just get started today and get to our first guests let's boogie on down all right so coming up we have cat hill and emma ford hopefully they are the authors of a terrific new book the best one i've seen on grooming ever it's called world class grooming for horses and we're going to talk to them they're the authors of this fantastic new book it's good to have you both on let's start with cat cat tell us a little bit about yourself and how you have the credentials to write a book on grooming um well i guess um i started I've always been horse crazy and always knew I was going to be on the care end of horses. Uh, we, we, I grew up on a small subsistence farm and we didn't have a ton of money. And I knew I wanted, the first time I went to the big events in Wellington, um, as a spectator, I saw those big time horses and I wanted to be near them. And so I started grooming. Uh, pretty much by the time I was 10 or 11, I was riding Arabians on the um, breed show circuit and started grooming to pay my way. And um, sort of just kept doing that and kept switching disciplines and kept sort of wanting to just be around the entire horse uh, community. Um, so I, I've done everything from the Arab breed shows to then switching to hunters in college. I worked for an Irish farm, uh, Irish show jumping yard in Ireland for six months, worked for Tina Kanya, the dressage rider, as a working student, um, worked in Wellington doing freelance grooming, and then kind of landed working with Mara Depew doing eventing as well. So I've sort of been behind the scenes at, in a lot of different disciplines, um, in a lot still, of different Do you still levels. have the whip marks from working from the Irish rider? Just <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will actually tell you that of the bosses I've had, he was the most laid back. Really? Um, it was Yes, absolutely. He was the most laid back. Now, the hours were intense and the living quarters were abominable, <laughs> but he was very easy to work for. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Helena Fox hunts, and she's, she's known a few Irish guys who, uh, who've led the fox hunts, and they weren't always that laid back, were they, Helena? Well, the, you know, it depends on the circumstances. They're, they're either oh, at one end of the pole or the other. <laughs> they're either super laid back well, yes. or super intense, <laughs> which is just fine because you know what? You always know where you stand with them. That's what I like about Irish horsemen. You just, they're very clear. <laughs> this is true. It is true. Emma's laughing because she also <laughs> she's also working for a non-American uh, and has in the past. So we'll find out about that. But Emma, w- tell us a little bit about yourself. 
Um, well, I, a bit like Kat, I grew up probably on the horses before I could walk. Um, my dad was a master of foxhounds in England, and I came up through the pony club, and um, I actually did quite a lot of show jumping in, in my younger days. <laughs> and then I came over to the States in 98 and started for Adrian Iorio in Massachusetts and was with her for seven years. And she actually let me ride and groom. Um, but I was never really, I was always going to be the turnout person. I was never going to be the, be the assistant trainer. I was just sure. <laughs> so um, I ended up, we did a, took a horse over to Blenheim um, in, I think it must have been 2002. And that was sort of the start of it for me. I was like, this is, this is what I want to do. I want to fly with these horses and go to these international competitions. And the only way I was going to do that was to, you know, work for one of the top riders in the world. And, so um, after working for her for seven years, I then started with Philip in 2005 and um, haven't really looked back <laughs> and done a lot have, of miles and a lot of flights. <laughs> have you found a difference, Emma, in um, what you grew up with in the UK versus what the grooming standard today? I mean, a lot of our grooming habits um, and traditions they're not arbitrary. There's a very important reason for them, especially a lot of those that came from the hunt field. Um, and then, you know, a fair amount of those trans translate into the show ring. Um, do you find that there's a difficulty in, or is, is there a blending? Is there a challenge? What, what do you feel about that? Um, do you mean across disciplines or between the countries? I guess between countries, I'm more, you know, because sometimes I guess in America, I, I tend to think that we do things um, less so out of for, for, for practical reasons and more out of looks and presentation. Um, do you ever find, do you ever find that? Are you ever challenged? You hit a nerve by there, that? especially. Sorry. Cat Cat's laughing because she came from the Arabian world. She's really laughing. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what if I did? I guess. Emma, go ahead, no, Emma. for me personally, um, uh, it was. I I gonna say like I grew up you know my dad the way I was brought up like I had to do everything myself if I wanted to go to a show then I had to get the horse ready I would tell my dad what time we were leaving and he'd be like okay you know I'll be ready to drive your pony make sure it's on the ring you know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so you know and by the time I was 12 I was getting his hunt horses ready to go ready braided and off to go and um right right from the start go I had such a strong um, grounding and looking, taking care of your own horse and dealing with um, turning them out smart. And I, I, even with my dad, like even today, he, you know, he always laughs at me how much time I take, you know, turning the horses out like, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> and having them shiny. Um, when I came over to the state, um, uh, it's, it's, I don't know, I find it hard to explain, but it was, it was actually for me, it was a big transition to come over and, um, you know, sort of go into a, into Adrian's barn. She was very good at, you know, these these kids have to come in and learn how to take care of their own horses. And, you know, but and, and it was very surprising how many they didn't want to. They did, they just wanted to come and ride and you check out the pony. They didn't care how it looked. And um, I found that very odd. <laughs> so, um, you know, one of the things, like, we're hoping to get from the book is the clinics and that, and I just hope to encourage more people that, Taking care of part, you know, taking care of your own horse and learning to present it well, and you know, health is is that's the whole deal. It's the whole package. <laughs> well, I gotta <laughs> tell you, I gotta tell you, Emma and Kat, you guys did a fantastic job with this book. It's you know, Jennifer and I have seen over the last thirty years a lot of books on grooming. This is by far the best, and I, and I'm saying that mm -hmm. for a couple of reasons. One is you're very thorough. You can tell it was written by somebody who's done each one of these things a million times. Uh, so, so you can tell that in the book, and I, you know, I hope that's what you were trying to go for because that's what it conveys. <laughs> Plus, then there are pictures, and you know, I'm an ADD guy. I got attention span of a gnat, and but the pictures in this book that are really like. I also like recipe books that have pictures of every step of the recipe. That's what you have here. You have a recipe book that has a picture of every step of what you're talking about with each thing within grooming. And you don't cover just brushing the horses. You cover everything. Kat, uh, was that your goal? Um, it was. It definitely was. Our, we When we started talking to the publisher, um, that was our group goal. You know, They said they really wanted a book. They really wanted it to be photo-heavy. 
and we, Emma and I sort of looked at our photography skills and we're like, well, these are a little substandard. Um, so mm-hmm. I asked my sister-in-law. But your iPhone wasn't taking good enough pictures for the book. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it definitely, that was not in our, we have a lot of skills. I would not say <laughs> photography is in our skill set. And um, my sister-in-law came along and she knew nothing about horses, which was actually fantastic because as we were going along, she knew from somebody who didn't know how to do it, what pictures would be needed to explain it to her. And um, it was just like exactly what we envisioned when it, when it all came together, as far as you could know nothing about it, pick up the book and learn how to clean the stall or braid a tail, you know, whatever difficulty level you could just look at the pictures, read the text, and go and do it, which is really what we were hoping for. Well, it definitely... And I give her huge credit, because we couldn't have done it without her. Let me tell you, if anybody's out there and they're single female, and you have a boyfriend that's new into the horses, you buy them this book, because it really (laughs) will save a lot of hassle. You won't get yelled at as much as as the boyfriend. I know, because I went through all this 30 years ago. You won't get yelled at as much. You'll know a lot more going in, and it'll just save the relationship. Uh, So your book is now a relationship saver. Well, that's, 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 I guess there's another market we have to tap into. We have to yes, think about that yes, one. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Cash, man. It's all about the cash. Guys, yeah, yeah. There are, I want to just give everybody the scope of this book. It, it, it covers everything from traveling with your horses to wrapping the legs to blanketing to cooling out to... Uh, to just everything. I mean, there's everything is in here. It's, you know, when you, we, a lot of times we say grooming, we think of brushing and, you know, doing the feet and that kind of thing. But this is everything from on the showgrounds to manes and tails, just everything. And, and so it's so comprehensive. And I think that's one of the things I really liked about it. Emma, what was the toughest part of, of, of writing a book like this? <laughs> um, two things for me in particular. Um, Stringing thoughts together <laughs> in a somewhat <laughs> grammatical way. <laughs> um, and um, Helene and I have that it, problem every week, by the way. Right. Every time well, we yeah, is that, is that, <laughs> and um, you know, putting you know, you, I, I'm glad you feel you can look at the pictures and read the text because trying to explain something like picking out a hoof, which we do probably 40 times a day, and is so natural to us, like. It actually probably took us 15 minutes to write that one sentence because <laughs> like, um, it was so natural. But then, and, and for me, the other side, we had a bit of a technology, technological disadvantage with me being on the team because I know nothing about computers. And um, thank God, if I hadn't been for Cat, we this book would not have happened. That's the <laughs> truth. Because uh, any, uh, I would just, I would end up writing my, my you know, the chapters I did, I would write on my iPad and I'd send them to Cat. And I'm like, well, I'm, here's half of it, but I don't know where the other half went. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she would salvage the situation for me. <laughs> was there a point where the, where the two of you had said, what, or what was the turning point that made it really clear that you absolutely needed to write this book? It, there had to have been some moment where you went, I, that's it, we're doing it, it's time. This is it. Um, well, we, we'd always, <laughs> we'd always sort of gone back and forth because we would get working students in or we'd get amateurs in who loved their horses and just didn't know how to take care of them properly. You know, all the best intentions and they'd show up thinking they knew what they were doing and just didn't. And then I had just had my first baby, so was not grooming as much, um, was staying home a lot more and had quite a bit more free time on the computer. But the same time that one of our good friends, Doug Kane, had just worked with Trafalgar, written his book, and they happened to go to him and say, hey, we'd really like, you know, to write a groom's book. And Doug had always been telling me that I needed to. I had actually written him a little handwritten book for his grooms um, one of the years when I was helping him train, train a new person. And he sent that little copy off to... Trafalgar Square, and they happened to call and say, hey, we really want to do this. And I said, well, I can't do this alone. And called Emma and said, if I do this, I need you. (laughs) Um, And so we sort of, it was really, to me, it was sort of the pieces just happened to come together. There was no real moment. It had been something we'd always said we wanted to do. And somebody kind of came along and said, hey, will you write this? And 
will back you. And um, we couldn't really say no. So the stars all aligned. So aligned, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 That's yes. Sure. yes. Yeah, you had to do it. Well, we're glad that you did. Uh, Glenn, um, <clears throat> you know, Mother's Day is coming off and like. <laughs> you want me to send you the book, Helena? Is that what you're saying? Maybe. And then my birthday is a couple months later. I mean, Christmas. <laughs> this is great, guys. I got to say, I, I absolutely think it's, again, I think it, I'm not just saying that either. Uh, the listeners know I'll say it's crap if it's crap and it's not, yeah. you know. So, we don't blow smoke. We don't no. have time for well, that. thank you. <laughs> no, it was really, really good. It was obvious that there, and it's a tabletop book. This is one of those old coffee table books. It is big, it's heavy, and it, I like how it's set up. It actually has the binder. It has one of the circular binders, so that so that the pages don't get uh, broken off. Because this is one of those books you're going to use a lot in the barn, and I'm I'm glad that the publisher decided to do that. That was a smart move. The pages won't fall out. Uh, well, I got to give you guys credit. Where can, they can find it? There's a website, right? Worldclassgrooming.com. Yep, there's our website, worldclassgrooming.com, and then there's also, which is where you can get information on the book, information on us, and information on our clinic clinics, and then you can purchase the book straight okay, you're from doing, our publisher. Wait which a is, minute, Kat, you're doing grooming clinics? We are. Our first one is May 25th at um, True Prospect. Um, Emma can tell you a little bit more about them. She's sort of, they're really her brainchild, and I'm just trundling along after her. Um, that's so, Emma. a great idea, Emma. I don't think that's ever been done before. Well, we're just putting ourselves out there, so we'll let you know how it goes. Out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the idea is we just felt like so many people, um, you know, so I have so many people come to Phillips Barn, you know, oh, what do you do? I've done this. Oh, my God, my horse is this. Da, da, da. Um, and I've had a couple of riders and like his cat, you know, approached us saying, oh, my God, if you could just tr train our groom, it would be so helpful. Okay. And, um, you know, I just felt this was a very good moving forward point from the book of, um, well, you know, if you want to learn, if you want to be hands-on, then let's, let's give these people a hands-on clinic. And um, obviously, Philip's been amazing and let us use the farm. And we're, they're, they're basically going to get anywhere from six to about, well, five to six hours tutorial. There's also, I've got a friend coming down who's going to give a stretch and demonstration because I think, you know, a lot of these amateurs really want to know what more they can do with their horses when they're spending time with them, you know. Um, and we're, we're hoping, you know, it's a wait and see, but we're hoping it's something that will take off and, um, you know, everybody will want to everybody will want to have us around and <laughs> let, learn a little bit more. <laughs> well, you guys are fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's worldclassgrooming.com. Emma, I know you have a horse show to get to. So uh, good luck to you and Philip out there at Jersey Fresh, right? And uh, I hope yep, the weather for holds it. for you guys. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nice now. My tan's looking good. My tan's looking good. <laughs> Terrific. Well, thank you, Emma. <laughs> and, and Emma Ford and Cat Hill, worldclassgrooming.com. Glenn the Geek here. The life of horse person is hard enough, and we all hate doing the required paperwork, and unfortunately many of us never get around to it, and it just piles up on our desk. That is about to change thanks to the Equisketch Records app for your iPhone or iPad. My wife and I use it to track our horses, and we absolutely love this thing. Equisketch Records is the most thorough and complete equestrian records app on the market today. We love this app because you can track your farrier work, your dental, your Coggins, medicines, worming, and so much more. And you can get reminders on your device when all of these things are due. You'll never forget a worming or shots or farrier visit again. But it not only tracks your horse, you can also manage your horse shows, including individual events. You can manage riders, including lessons and memberships and so much more. And you can sync it between your iPhone and your iPad, and all of this for the price of a couple of cups of coffee from Starbucks. Search for Equisketch Records in the iOS App Store or go to Equisketch.com. That's E-Q-U-I-S-K-E-T-C-H.com. Equisketch.com. Yellow, yellow, my favorite food is yellow. It's very, very good. My favorite food is yellow. I'll start with a taco, soft like a cloud. I want mine crunchy, I like to eat loud. Food, food, can bring you back to a good mood. All you need is food, and it'll be all right. Though your jeans may feel a little tired. Well, 
coming up next, we have our regular guest, our second cat on the show today, which I think is almost impossible, but we did it. We have Cat from Eat Your Tart Out with her recipes of the month for busy horse people. Hello, Cat. Howdy. How are you guys doing? Good. Hey, I'm going to give you a happy early Mother's Day because you're about ready to have a baby. I am. And thank you very much. It's so weird when everybody's like, are you getting excited for Mother's Day? I'm like, oh, we're not even there yet. Oh, okay. But we're five weeks away. So, I mean, it's almost here. And everything Mm. going well? Are you doing okay? Yeah, everything's been fantastic. So, I'm, you know, I'm eating food again, but I can't say I'm cooking a whole lot. So, I do apologize to those who follow me on a regular basis because there hasn't been a whole lot going on. But yeah, it's been good otherwise. It's just, I feel bad. You know, the blog hasn't been getting updated as regularly. So, well, you're going to be up a lot during the night coming up, and you're going to yes. have time. So, I imagine you could be writing blog posts about three in the morning now. Yeah, and it'll probably be all the things you can do on no sleep and in five minutes or less between <laughs> baby calls. So, yeah, I'll get really creative <laughs> with things. It just right now, it just, yeah, it's just the basics, you know, nothing too crazy. So, yeah, it's been okay. <laughs> well, I haven't had a chance yet to wish Helena happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Helena. Is that, is it this, it's this Sunday, it's right? This Sunday, that's yes. right. Yeah. I'm a little bit. And, and, um, yeah, well, thank you. I like being a mother. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. And I know that uh, you're very proud of your little girl right now. She's out kicking butt in sports and, Horses, all kinds of stuff. So uh, she, well, no, right now she's she's laid up in bed. They went to New York City yesterday, uh, so now she's home sleeping it off uh, okay. at twelve and a half years old. Yeah, <laughs> I'm up and I'm feel good. <laughs> Party too much yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's got her little like her her funky pink headphones on. Well, you in know room what there. she could use some of is the first thing Kat's going to talk about, and today we're going to talk about two different things. One of them is a drink. Lavender lemonade. Tell us about Ooh, that. Ooh, that is yeah, so up her so alley. This is, you know, I was just thinking of stuff to do today, and that would kind of last people for a little while until I can get back in into the swing of things. But I was thinking, like, what are some really easy recipes that can be versatile, but can also kind of shine because summer's coming up and it's warm, and you want all these yummy things. And lavender lemonade is absolutely one of those things. And it's just, it's very easy. It's just a basic lemonade recipe. But what happens is you're basically making a equal amount of sugar to water ratio um, together, or you're mixing sugar and water in an equal ratio together on the stovetop, letting it dissolve completely so you don't get a gritty lemonade. And then afterwards, what you're doing is, is you're just steeping that sugar water with herbs. And I just happened to have some fresh lavender from some of the local farms around. And I said, you know what, this sounds really amazing. And it was, and everybody loves it. You know, it's one of those things where somebody might poo poo it at first, but it really is quite delicious. And if you've got like fresh mint or basil or anything like that in the garden, you can throw that in there and let it steep as well. And then just mix it into your lemonade and have it with some ice. Isn't lavender the stuff they put in potpourri? It is, but there's a certain food grade that you can get. So if so, I shouldn't take my potpourri and put it in the lemonade. No, oh, I don't okay. recommend oh, that <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of times too they spray that with some other stuff, and you never quite know if it's right, you know a edible. Real... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I just want to clarify, just because I, you know, I've had that thought. Everybody's like, "Oh yeah," and I'm like, "No, no, no! Don't take the stuff out of the bowl." Like, <laughs> no, no, well, we're not going there. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, it's a good, and I like Where doing. Where do you buy lavender, like food lavender? You can buy it online. They sell it, but you just again, it has to be like there's essential oils. Like you can use, you know, if you really didn't want to steep it, you could say, okay, I'm going to add a few drops of lavender essential oil. But again, you just have to make sure that in the description of the products or ask the company themselves, is it food grade? Okay. That's the most important part. Um, if you and say, you, you know eat what? it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, And if you're not a big fan of lavender, that's okay. I've actually used this recipe before to make strawberry basil lemonade, which is absolutely delicious too. So you can get kind of creative with it. You can mix in fruit, different herbs, things like that. You can mix in tea if you really wanted to and just steep that in there and have kind of an, you know, make your own Arnold Palmer. 
Mm. Yeah, very good. Well, this looks good. Lavender yeah. Lemonade. You can find that at eatyourtartout.com. And then you can also find, and I'm not a big zucchini fan, but maybe this way I'd try it because I love fried green beans. If it's on a, it's, it's on a menu at a restaurant for an appetizer, we get it every time. And we've had really good fried green beans and really bad fried green beans. But today you're going to talk about zucchini fries. Yeah, and you can do this recipe. That's, what, again, why I was trying to pick these ones that can kind of sustain your listeners for the next couple of months <laughs> and hopefully kind of mix it up. But these are great with carrots, zucchini, summer squash. Um, you could do it with potatoes if you really wanted Green to. Green beans. Green beans. Yeah. yeah, sorry. I was getting there. Okay. Um, <laughs> and But it's just it's a very straightforward recipe, but you bake it, and it's got crunchy. I use panko breadcrumbs just because those are typically crispier than typical breadcrumbs. And it just makes this great baked fry. So it's really easy. You just put a simple egg wash together. You dunk your veggies in there and then you put the breading on there and you just heat the oven up pretty hot. And then you've got a great side dish in no time. That sounds good. Wow. Do you egg like- wa- I, you lost me at egg wash, though. A simple egg wash. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's usually what? just egg and either milk or water. And I just happen to use egg and milk. So that's it. And you just Helena, do you something. like, have you had uh, fried green beans or any of that? I have. I love them. Yeah, they're good. Tastes like I candy. Tastes like uh, candy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you had fried zucchini? I haven't had this yet. This sounds good. Yep. I've had fried zucchini. Although we're into grilling everything now. Once the snow melted, we grill zucchini. We grill eggplant. We grill, although the green beans fall through. So you yeah, can't you can't grill, grill green and beans. And then asparagus is delicious. Mmm. <laughs> what is this? I can't do these episodes anymore. I'm sorry. I, I always do this. I know. See, you're going to have like three months where you can get skinny. You're going to enjoy the grill. And then I'm going to come back and make everybody fat again. All well, right. you know what? I think it's actually Kat's fault that we're doing the next segment. Our Tack and Habit segment today is Saddleback Chocolates. Yep. There you go. Totally her That's fault. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> totally her fault. And I have them right here in front of me, which means I'm going to have to eat some. You're going to have to. Yeah, I could give you a whole background story on them. They're awesome. So, yeah, well, yeah, we're going to have Carrie on. She's coming on with us today from Saddleback. Perfect. We'll have her coming up next. Well, this is great. Zucchini fries and lavender lemonade. You can find them at eatyourtartout.com. And tart is with an E at the end, T-A-R-T-E. And I hope she has all kinds of great recipes. I know you were doing a lot last summer, so there's lots of great recipes for the summertime on there. You know, the one thing is about your blog posts is they don't get old. No, no. they certainly don't. Right, so you can use they them any time. stick times. around so. and entice you forever. <laughs> That's right. Well, good luck, Kat. We're going to be thinking about you and the new baby. Well, thank you. We can't wait to see the pictures. And uh, now, you said at the beginning of this interview that everything's going great and it was all hunky dory. Does your husband feel the same way? He wasn't for probably about two months, especially okay. because I'm going the like natural route where I don't want drugs. I'm hiring uh, a tool. Like, he was like, no way. My family doesn't do this. Guys don't do this. This is totally crazy. I love you, but no, I'm not doing that. And we kind of had a coming to motherhood meeting if you will and he understood and we met with the doula so now everything's really good like we're all on even playing ground we're excited everybody's prepped and you know me I'm like totally OCD so when I'm I can't for I don't know I I don't understand what pregnancy and cooking have to do with one another but for whatever reason it just doesn't mesh well (laughs) but as far as my organization goes and my nesting I am phenomenal I don't know what happened but it all transferred over so we've got plans in place and lists and all this stuff and so even if things don't come together we've got lists to make it through so we're good very Hmm. good i knew you would kat you're so organized and thorough uh which i am not so i always admired that about you well thank you yeah yeah we i could learn something thank you kat good luck best wishes my dear and happy mother's day much appreciated same to you helena thank you Well, our Tack and Habit segment today uh, brought to you by Buy Media Equine.
We all know the importance of deworming our horses, and Dr. Ellefson of Biomedia Equine is helping us make sure we are doing it right. Listen for his four-part series the first week of every month on this very show. I just wanted to remind everyone, if you are due for deworming, why not save a few bucks on the popular Biomedia line of wormers, including Equimax, Bimectin, Exodus, Exodus Multidose, and Equal. You can find coupons and special offers at buymediaequine.com, including a variety of rebate offers from cash to free ivermectin. You can also get up to $2 a dose back for Equimax. And while you're at Buy Me to Equine, get your free horse health record keeper, and you can just download it there. Plus, learn a bunch about parasites and deworming at Buy Me to, that's B-I-M-E-D-A, equine.com. We at the Horse Radio Network all use Buy Me to Dewormers because we want the best for our horses, and we know you want the best for yours, too. Buy me to equine.com and tell them the Horse Radio Network sent you. Well, I don't know what it, I don't know if that was good. Uh, good thing, good timing to put a dewormer in as our attack and habit segment sponsor when we're going to be talking about chocolate. But <laughs> I apologize for that ahead of time. We have a guest coming on today. Her name is Gary Berggraf, and she is from Saddleback Chocolates, one that Helene and I had never heard of, but yet they're making their headway into the horse world, and she sent us some samples. So we're going to talk about them, and we're going to do a taste testing. So let's get carry on. Nobody was happier than I was to be working for the Horse Radio Network about a week ago when a lovely package arrived at my front door. The package was from Saddleback Chocolates. And, uh, of course, I opened it up and started digging into the contents. And today we have with us Carrie Burgraff of Saddleback Chocolates, and she's going to talk to me, <laughs> not to you, Glenn, my to mouth, me. <laughs> my mouth is full of dark chocolate right now, so you guys are going to have to go on without me. the magic awesome. that goes into these chocolates because they not only look beautiful, but they taste really good. And I'm like a bit of a chocolate snob. So welcome, Carrie. Are you going to spill your secrets to us? Please. Oh, absolutely. Then it's it's actually not a secret. It's just really great European Belgian chocolate from Bissinger's. Um, so that's a 356 year old legacy combined with the unique designs and the, the heritage of the horse industry um, combined to make a great product. It is well Belgian chocolates. We know, and and if you if you are at all interested in chocolate, Belgians do a good job with chocolate. They do a great job. But what I found really nice was that you have, um, I think, you know, there are a few companies out there that, that do specialty chocolates and Glenn, we've dabbled in this a little bit. Um, they either do the presentation really well, or they do the chocolate really well. And I haven't found any one company that does that, that combines them, you know, into a gift. It's basically, it's a beautiful gift item that, you you know you can enjoy in your tummy and your mouth as much as you can by looking at it. It's like something that you'd be really proud of. So, um, the wh where did the idea from the, for coming up with a chocolate company come from? Is it has it been around for a long time? And why the equestrian industry? Well, um, we only actually launched last July, um, and so we're relatively new. Um, the founder of the company is Maureen Moore, and um, she and her husband Mike own Saddleback Stables which is a thoroughbred racing farm in Illinois outside of St. Louis. Oh, um, that's why so, the chocolates we got were all, some of them were all about racing. They had these beautiful scenes on them all about racing. Now I know. Yeah. All right, so we, we do cover a number of different disciplines with our in-stock um, items, but we also can do some really neat custom um, products so we can put your logo on it. We can put people's silks on it. We can, we have one uh, farm that we're working on an image of one of their breeders cup winners um, on the bar. So we have a lot of potential for creating really special gifts, uh, whether they're just for one person or whether we're making them for 300 people. Well, I got to tell you, one of the things that Helena, I don't know what you found is the graphics on the chocolates are so vibrant. Uh, yes. I've never seen this before. I don't know what kind of, think system you use but the graphics are so vibrant like for the racing ones the silks and the hats for the kentucky derby by the way we ate half of this box of chocolates during the <laughs> kentucky derby last saturday i want to tell you that's that's exactly what they're made for that and a great glass of wine are there's a perfect uh, combination to watch a race or enjoy a holiday i was like helena though i have to tell you that when i got them uh, you know 
I'm a chocolate snob. I, 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 with my diet, I'm allowed dark chocolate, so I'm become a kind of a connoisseur. And I pretty much only get the European chocolates. Uh, and there's even some of them. There's one particular chocolate that that uh, lint <laughs> um, that I just hate. Uh, I just cannot stand <laughs> that chocolate. Lint. <laughs> Um, and, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and I think one of the secrets is is trying to get a high cacao um, concentration without having it be bitter, and that's a delicate balance. And it is, so, especially um, when you start getting into the seventy or eighty percent chocolates. You know, the really dark right. chocolates. I really like Godiva, and this is this is Godiva quality chocolate. This really is. Um, oh, and and I got to tell so you, that you kind like of it. surprised Helene and I. We I wrote her an email as soon as I tested it. I said, "Hey, this is really good," because I think our expectations were were so low that that when we got really good chocolate, it was like, "Wow, wow, yeah. that's yeah. awesome!" I was like, you got you got you're gonna be getting a box soon. And I was like, "Okay," and <laughs> you know, of course, my daughter, my boyfriend, we all gather around the kitchen table, and they're like, Are "You gonna have some?" <laughs> You try some first. <laughs> and then Grace That's is like, great. it's really pretty, Mom. And I was like, yeah, you know what? This is a little bit different. It's it's very elegant. It's just so beautifully presented. It's simple. It's clean. It's professional looking. It doesn't look like somebody's making chocolates in their, in their backyard and, you know, just decided to kind of ship out a box. It's really well thought out. So, um, is it true that the Bissinger family you guys. that's been doing this for 300 years, is it true that they were King Louis the Fourteenth's official chocolate uh, company? I believe so. They are still the chocolatier of the kings and queens of Europe since the, their beginning, you know, 300 oh. odd years ago. They are still the, the uh, chocolatier for the kings and queens of Europe. So it's uh, there's definitely that legacy there. And um, I'm glad that you guys appreciate the quality because... I think it's great to get a beautiful chocolate, but unless it tastes good, it's really kind of pointless. Um, right. But that's something that, that Maureen did really well when she started this company is she took a little bit of time to develop the product and make sure the quality was there. And, and that's where the partnership with Bissinger's came in. Um, Bissinger's has been wonderful about helping us come up with some really unique products, but they've had their quality chocolate behind it. So it, it's been a great pairing, and we're really excited about it. I got to tell you guys, uh, one of the things I thought of, and Helena, I don't know if you thought of that. I'm sure you did, being the marketing girl. One of the things you sent us was an actual business card size chocolate. I with, loved that it. That was a business card. On the top was imprinted a business card. And yeah, I got to right. thinking, you know, we, we're always talking, remember, Helena, we always do our Christmas shows, and we're always talking about what the barn owner can get for their, their students and their boarders. This would be a wonderful gift for students and boarders with actually the logo of the farm on it or in a business card of the farm. It would be a yeah. great idea. Uh, sure. And because of the customization, there's also a lot of flexibility. So we have customers who have their logo put on the chocolate part, and then they flip their business card in, and that makes a really memorable presentation. But we've also even had families that are very equestrian-oriented, and they've had weddings in their family where this chocolate has on the um, the logo on it is, you know, like Mike and Sally, November 15, 2015. And then they, instead of a business card, they put in a little card that says, you know, thank you so much for coming to our wedding and making our day complete. So there's a lot of potential for customizing it to fit a number of different occasions. Well, um, you give me good chocolate, I might actually like going to weddings. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, <laughs> we sure appreciate the support, um, and we're excited for people to get to see it, and we'd love for well, people to visit they, us how, on the website. Is it in stores? How, how does it work that way? Now, for the most part, um, small orders can be done online. Um, Even small, in the summer? custom orders. Yep. We, okay. we can control for the temperature by mail out our orders with coolers and cold packs so we can get it to you even in the heat of the summer. Um, so we can do it um, non-custom orders by ordering online. Um, you can also call me, especially if you have something, either a larger order or a custom order. Um, that would be best if they called me or emailed me to work out that order. We're still a small company. It's just four women um, and um, pretty much the other three women work full-time at other jobs. So um, we're still a small company, but um, 
a very passionate company because we love horses, we love chocolate, and we even have a loyal friends bar that has dogs and cats on it um, because we didn't want to leave out our small pets when we were appreciating these wonderful animals. So we cover a lot of different disciplines. Um, so I think there's something for everywhere, one in the product. Well, Helena, uh, I, I've eaten all of the dark chocolate out of my box now, so they're <laughs> all gone. Jennifer's left. I'm not a white chocolate person. I, are, did you try the white chocolate, Helena? Because I'm not a white chocolate person, so I didn't try it. But Jennifer didn't loves it. She loves white chocolate. If you could call inhaling it, trying it. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you'd well, like it. I took one bite of it. I'm like, let me just taste this little corner. It was gone in like 67 seconds. <laughs> yeah. I, I, when we pack the chocolate, sometimes, you know, it gets me in the mood to eat chocolate when we're packing an order. So I would take something home with me um, when we're together packing it. And I'd gotten this half pound bar and I'd eaten, oh, about an inch or two off of the end of it and um, got home and I had to go to the grocery store. And when I got back, my husband had finished the entire rest of the bar. <laughs> so <laughs> it can be really dangerous. You're right. Uh, uh, and one of the beauties, you were talking about the white chocolate. One of the things I really like about our white chocolate, I'm personally not much of a white chocolate person because typically it has a really high sugar content. So it's kind of even makes your teeth hurt. But this is such a smooth, rich white chocolate that if you love white chocolate or even if you're kind of on the fence, this just a, a really nicely done white chocolate. Carrie gets home after a day at work and she can't get to sleep till like three in the morning because she's bouncing off the walls. <laughs> sugar. Exactly. That would be me. Exactly. <laughs> well, one of the things I love is that when Maureen came up with the design and with Christy um, was her business partner and Chris is our other business partner, when they um, came up with the design, like the half pound bar comes nestled in organic straw. So not only is the product all that. natural and fair trade and hand poured. So those are great things for the chocolate, but it's even nestled in uh, some of the products come nestled in the organic straw. So it just has that great rustic wine feel to it. I have though, is it one pound or two pound bar in front of me right now? Is it? It's probably the one that has vector art, the sketch um, sort yeah. of um, artwork is our, our half pound bar. Half but pound. One of you has the, um, one of you has the 10 ounce solid chocolate horse. Um, and we had a big me. run at Easter because, Yep, and isn't that a beautiful um, piece of chocolate? Was a beautiful piece of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you know, one there's of the a, that was the last like, one. There's a reason you don't hear Helena eating any chocolate today because it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last one to go. I was like, we can't touch this one. We can't touch. Well, yeah. we have a little ritual in my family, like especially on the weekends, we will. Um, you know, we'll, the the three of us will indulge in a small piece of chocolate after dinner. It's like. It's, it's a big deal. You know, we, we put the chocolate on the altar and we all take a piece, whatever. <laughs> so, but it happens pretty regularly and, and it just happened a little more often, a little more regularly once your package arrived. But that one oh, was the awesome. last to go because it was the most beautiful to look at. <laughs> oh, and, and we love that. I mean, the detail in it. And one of the reasons the details are so great on the chocolate is because all of the images that you'll see on our in-stock products come from our horses, our dogs, our cats. So these are real live animals that have been captured in the chocolate. So they you can almost see the personality in what you're what you're looking at. You can see the real personality. So this isn't just a, a you know, an image that someone came up with in their minds, but all the detail, the muscle work in the chest and the legs and, and all of that and the expression in the eyes, it's because we're trying to capture our animals in the chocolate. So it, it just adds another quality or another dimension the chocolate. Well, now that we've totally made everybody hungry, Carrie, thank you so much for joining us from Saddleback Chocolates. It's saddlebackchocolates.com is where you can find the website. Thank you so much for sending over the chocolate to Helena and I and our families appreciate it. Well, thank you so much. And I really um, appreciate the support and, and we hope to get to introduce our product to a lot more people. Well, now that I have a sugar coma, after eating all that chocolate while you guys were talking, I got to tell you, though, ever since my diet, I'm only allowed to have dark chocolate like a little bit once a day because I'm not mm -hmm. allowed to have sugar. And dark chocolate, though, is is good for you. And you're you're supposed to have a little bit of dark chocolate and it's less sugar content than the than the other chocolates. And now that I've been eating dark chocolate for almost two years, when I taste regular milk chocolate, it doesn't really taste as good to me anymore. And And that's a change. It used to be the other way around. 
I used to be a fan of white chocolate and milk chocolate. And, but white chocolate, uh, Saddleback version, notwithstanding, has gotten a little too rich and creamy and fatty mm-hmm. for me. Um, and Buck and Grace love dark chocolate. So we do eat chocolate in our house. So I, I um, kind of get, you know, what the majority likes. So now I'm a dark chocolate fan. Like I love it. And I love all the things that you can mix in it, you know? Like I'm about 70, 75%. You know how it says what percentage it is cocoa on the bar? Yep. Yeah, I, yeah, if yeah. If I get into the 80s and 90s, I, that's a little too much for me. I, it is. Yeah. It is. I'm about 70% too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I just tried a 90 bar and oh my God. <laughs> it was like, I couldn't eat it. It was, it was too much. Too much. Maybe you could melt that and do something with it. <laughs> But eating it straight up was too much for me. You're right. I'm I'm in that 75 range. Well, it is really good. Really good. Well, what fun. We talk about food today. We talk about grooming with one of the best books out there. And just, just a lot of fun here today on the show. And did I see on the schedule that you're going to have some uh, fox hunting stuff next week? Is that the plan? Uh, I hope so. Yep. Okay, good. Yep. Get some more fox hunters on. Very good. Well, remember that uh, the easiest, simplest way to listen to our show is the app. It's free and it's easy to download and listen to the shows on the app. Just go to uh, the App Store and look for Horse Radio Network. Stable Scoop Radio Show is one of eight shows on the app, and that's at iOS or Android, either one. And you can uh, you can find all the past episodes of the Stable Scoop Show, or our show notes, or links to the guests, or whatever. Or if you you're going, I know they had that guest on sometime in the last seven years. Just go to Stable Scoop. The search <laughs> works really well. That's what Helene and I do to see if we've had a guest on. It's true. You go to Stable Scoop and you just put the guest name or wh- whoever's name in in the search, and it'll tell you. It'll bring up the episode that they were on if they've been on a show with us. Uh, we don't remember who we had on, you know, two years ago, let alone seven. <laughs> Uh, we have to do the same thing. But the search works really well. I don't mention that enough. And Helena can be found at? You can find me at flirtingwiththeworld.com. You can send me an email. Just send it to admin at flirtingwiththeworld.com. Or you can always reach me at the Horse Radio Network, helena at horseradionetwork.com. And we thank everybody. I got some feedback uh, last week from the Lyme episode that we did. And I sent out a couple of packets of information on the diet that I do to a couple of people who are looking for that. If you have somebody that is has Lyme, a chronic Lyme, is not on the diet and listened to last week's show and is wondering what that is, I actually put it together in a PDF and I can send it out to you. I sent it out to Lindsay uh, Reese's sister. So she's starting on the diet again. So uh, we can get her back to health again. So if you need that, just send it to send an email to Glenn at horseradionetwork.com and I'll get that PDF out to you. Many thanks to our sponsors, Equisketch, and of course, by Mita D. Wormers. That's it for this week, Alina. That is plenty, but there will be more next week. Until then, happy scooping. Mm-hmm.